Hi, uh, I'm Dave Dewey with Fuji Karakase out of Tokyo, Japan, and we are a polymer paste maker. I am with our electronics materials division, and today we are exhibiting some of our newer innovations and developments in uh, electrically conductive pastes. So, um, where does your electrically conductive paste go? What is this, for example? Well, so this is our moldable material, and this is printed on. Uh, polycarbonate film and then thermoformed. This is just something we whipped up in our lab. It's just a very rough kind of idea of what you can do with this material. We, we mounted an LED on the polycarbonate with the conductive film and an insulating overcoat. Um, so does it have to do with the formable things, flexible things? Where does That's it right. go? So this is an ink, a conductive ink that can be used with uh, formable electronics. We have a number of projects we're working on, uh, a number of companies that are evaluating our materials uh, to see uh, what they can do with them. And should I? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> and in addition, we are also working on some stretchable materials, which we're also displaying today. Again, our R&D team whipped up a nice little uh, model of what you can do with these materials. So this is. Uh, a mock-up of a wearable electronics. This one? Right here? Yeah. So this is just a mock-up of wearable electronics. Of course, everybody's trying to make uh, uh, make these work. And so this is, again, something we whipped up in our lab. Just something rough uh, that gives you an idea of how this material can be used. So uh, it's, it's formed around the leg there, or it's flexible? So this is or? stretchable. So this is a stretchable material. You can bend and stretch it. And then we have a couple samples here that you can take a look at and uh, we've got laid out for visitors to try and uh, themselves. And so this is our urethane based stretchable conductive ink. Um, what's the challenge in doing something like this? Do you have to, in the nano level, make sure that the material is somehow um, able to stretch? That's a very good question. Uh, so of course the stretchability is coming from the polymer paste. Um, so of course the one challenge is making sure that you have good conductivity when the material has stretched because the conductivity comes from the physical contact between uh, particles of silver powder. And so when you stretch the material of course the silver uh, loses contact so that is one challenge with the material. It's to maintain that physical contact uh, within the silver powder, within the silver filler uh, when you're stretching the material. Uh, another challenges of course is when you stretch something when you pull on something uh, there is uh, memory there it, it doesn't always go back perfectly so there is some wear and tear there when you stretch it it uh, it wears out so there's Does a lot of challenges with uh, maintaining the performance of the material as you stretch it with the number of stretches with the number uh, of repetitions with the uh, expansion percentage if you're stretching 100 percent 200 percent so does it mean that the the device has to be robust enough to like have a variable amounts of kind of like energy or signals going through or not really it's like a fixed one no matter what it depends on the application so uh we have some developers that are working on material that uses the change in conductivity to sense the position of the stretchable material we have other developers that are coming to us and saying, no, we want consistent conductivity. Um, and so there are different uh, needs for different applications. Is uh, This is nano silver? That's right. Is this, this is what you're talking about or is different? This something is else? different here. So these are our inks for screen printing and grab your offset printing. So this is our nano silver ink. Uh, this can be printed yeah. on paper or um, other substrates. And then we have our, this is our, this is our conventional uh, ink. Uh, Fujikura Kase has been involved uh, with uh, printable uh, electronics for decades. And so this is one of our more conventional standard applications. This is the printed uh, lines for membrane switches. This is a simple keypad membrane. This is a membrane for a keypad. So every keyboard kind of have one of these things inside or what? Um, I don't know if it's every, but uh, a lot. A lot of them do and we have uh, been... Making them for a decade. Sorry. A long time. Yes, uh, so uh, a lot of keyboards use this technology and uh, we have a relatively large market share in uh, East Asia with the East Asian makers. Um, 
sorry, what, what is this part here? Okay, so this is a different material. So these inks are uh, relatively higher viscosity. They, they uh, can be printed with a certain amount of thickness. They can be screen printed. They can be metal mask printed, stencil printed. But this material has a uh, lower viscosity and it performs more like a paint. So this material is similar technology where we have a polymer uh, resin base with a metallic filler, but unlike the inks that can be printed, this is a paint that can be sprayed onto a surface. So this material uh, has a different uh, purpose. The printable inks are to make circuitry, to make circuit lead lines. Uh, this material is a shield material. So you apply the conductive material to a plastic substrate, to a plastic casing, and that gives it uh, an uh, shielding against electromagnetic interference. Um, is that a huge market to, to shield electronics like this? Or oh, yes. it's, it's very important for electronics. Um, for example, with uh, automotive, when you have a lot of different uh, equipment running simultaneously, you need to uh, prevent interference from the different machines. Uh, another large market is medical devices. Of course, medical devices need to perform. It's literally a matter of life and death. So a lot of our clients are using this material for the shielding on casings for electronic, uh, medical devices, like heart monitors and things like that, that you would have in a normal hospital room. All right. Um, and what's going on around here? OK. Um, this is our heat dissipation uh, coating. So this is a material that is designed to uh, release heat uh, and it can be used to improve the performance of things like heat sinks. Uh, this is actually something that's being uh, developed mostly by a different division. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah. it's not something I can speak to in too much detail about, okay. um, but it's a coating that improves the uh, heat dissipation of an object. And this part here? Is it solar? Yes, uh, so this is, uh, so this year at ID TechX we are exhibiting with one of our partner companies. Actually they are our former parent company called Fujikura. Uh, and Fujikura is a maker of a, a number of different electronic parts. Uh, we've been working with them on membrane switches for quite a long time. And these are their solar panels that they are Okay, that they are? That they are exhibiting this year. So, um, actually, this gentleman is yeah. uh, from Fujikura and he can speak in more detail about them. All right, okay. you, uh, the, the mic, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hi, so can you introduce yourself? So, uh, who are you? So, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Tetsuya Noda I'm from Fujikura, Japan. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, in a position of sales promotion of the Dyson's size solar panel, as well as uh, the sensor node, which for IoT, uh, using the Dyson's size solar panel. So this is enough to, to run the whole device? Uh, yes. So, so uh, what's special about your solar? Uh, what, what do you do? How do you... Well, compared with uh, solar power generator, silicon type solar panel, so it can be work under the lower light in intensity. So this is not silicon? Not silicon. It's, um, what is it then? So how do you, this is what's special, how do you, how is it made differently? Or is it already uh, a big market yeah, so, or? So, so we, are, we are manufacturing this solar panel by using the uh, uh, screen printing method. This is not silicon. Type, uh, so it's tr printed, printed uh, electronics. Yes. yes. So, um, uh, so um, is it in mass production in big quantities yes. or is, is it uh, prototypes? Yes, yeah, yeah, start, start launching the mass, mass production. So this is a, a factory in commercial level product. All right. Does it reduce the price of uh, solar? Uh, could be when we have a bigger model, so that could be uh, the, the lower the price. All right. Okay. 